me. I, I get, I get uh, frustrated when I feel like I can't get there. You know, there's too many things hanging on me or there's something blocking or I feel like I haven't really done it as, as well as I could, which is a lot of times, a lot of so cases. So where do you go for strength? Where do you go when you're lost and you're... You just get rooted, get rooted in creative force. And, uh, and everything that, that you need to know is there in the moment. And uh, you're connected to the center of the earth and the center of the universe and surrounded by that, filled and surrounded by creative force. And, uh, and then, you know, the, the things of life. Someone will come by and say something or you'll remember something or you'll see something or, uh, you know. There was one other thing that happened in the shooting of the massacre scene of the Cinnabon people in The Englishman's Boy. Uh, the village had been created. Uh, we were coming up to the, the scene where we come in and we shoot, we shoot, we shoot, we burn, we burn. Um, a lot of the people who were playing the First Nations people, some of them were actually descendants of the Carry the Kettle Band. So they were actually descendants of those people. So there was a number of synergies here. And John Smith, the director, said he was uh, kind of approached uh, by some of the First Nations actors who said, you know, John, before we do the scene, we need to have a ceremony. And John said, well, what do you mean? They said, well, we, it would be better if we had a ceremony, we had a feast, before we shot the retelling of this story of the massacre. So the producer said, fine, okay, uh, you know, the day before at lunch, we'll all go into town and we'll have a feast in one of the restaurants. And they said, no, uh, we would like the ceremony, the feast, to actually be in the place where are we are going to reenact the killing? And so we were all called, it was the next day, and we all sat in a big circle and the food was shared. And everything was in a Cinnaboyne, so I didn't understand anything. Uh, but it was totally moving. There were prayers, there were speeches, and we shared in the place where the killing would be reenacted. And then a man stood up and he sang this song in a Cinnaboyne. And it's hitting me here. And then it was over. And I went up to him afterwards and I said, um, I didn't understand, but it, it was hitting me in here. What were you singing about? Uh, he was, said, I'm singing to the pain. I said, oh, do you mean you're singing to the pain of the people who were killed in 1873? No, no, no. He said, no, no. They're dead. They're dead. I'm seek, singing to the pain that has existed generation after generation after generation after generation from that killing. That's what they were addressing. So again, the two approaches to storytelling were different. Where were the film crew that says, we're going to shoot, bang, bang, shoot, burn, burn. And the Assiniboine people were saying, no, we don't do that in our culture. We don't actually tell those kind of stories. And we need a ceremony to make that okay. Also is to honor the spirit of that story because um, you'll go to, for example, actually one of the actors who was in Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman was telling me the story of when they were going to shoot where a massacre had happened. And uh, people could feel it, they could feel the pain that was there. And, uh, and some people who are sensitive were able to, to were shown that what happened is the pain that people were feeling was not of the people who were murdered. It was the pain of relatives and family and community who came back and found them murdered. Right. That's the pain that you feel. So I'm, I'm really glad to hear that story and that song because that is the understanding and the vision that, that I've seen and heard in my travels about how it's handled. And also, they were shown pictures. There were babies, you know, they like to kill uh, children and women uh, soldiers, right? And they were shown pictures of a, a baby being murdered, but they were also shown that the spirit of the baby was taken out before the body was brutalized. So, 
you know, that's, that's kind of a grace uh, in itself. And I think about that every once in a while, especially when I was thinking about those babies that were murdered in that school, you know, and uh, just pray that their spirits were taken out, that they didn't have to feel any of that pain. But it's the pain of their families yeah. that's there, that's yeah. not going to leave. And, but it can be lifted with ceremony and prayer and the spirit of all that because the spirits of those are connected when you when you cry and you hold and you and you wish and you hold the spirits there you mm -hmm. know rather than letting them go one other thing about um, Englishman's boy is that's the first time that I was there in Cypress Hills which is where my great grandfather traveled because he was one of big bears so that's a part of the energy that fed me as well. Because Big Bear didn't sign until children were being starved in front of him. Eh? 